Erev Shabbos, those final moments before the holy day of rest, is a hectic moment in my home and in most homes. You're running around frantically, there's a bit of chaos in the air, quick, tear up the toilet paper, someone, up, someone else cover the, the button on the refrigerator with a piece of duct tape, someone else has to rush to set up the candles, plug in the hot plate, fill up the water urn. It's a time of intense chaos. In fact, Chazal saw this chaos. They understood human nature to leave all the tasks for the last minute, despite how much time you have, no matter if it's a late Shabbos or an early Shabbos. And they understood the human nature was to create that frantic moment and they encapsulated this emotion in a Mishnah that describes in the second chapter of Shabbos that Shlosha Dvarim Tzarach Adam Lomar Besoch Beso Er of Shabbos. There are three things you have to announce, you have to proclaim for your whole family on the eve of Shabbos, right before Shabbos. Isartem Erav Temed Likos Aner. Have you tithed yet? Have you given tzedakah? Have you made an Eruv for Shabbos, an Eruv Chatseros, to adjoin the, the territories, the backyards, so you can carry? And have you kindled the Shabbos candles? The advice of Chazal is to remember that in those moments before Shabbos, it's critical that you don't leave off a last few tasks that are vital going into the day of Shabbos. Certainly, Akadosh Baruch Hu, when he created the world in six days, certainly in his perfect ways, he didn't forget anything. He created each day perfectly, not only in this world, but the entire universe and beyond. HaKadosh Baruch Hu was perfect in all of his ways, and yet Erev Shabbos, Chazal describe that HaKadosh Baruch Hu left a few tasks off in the end of the list. Medrash says, and it's in Pirkei Avos as well, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu on Erev Shabbos, Ben Hashmashos, a few minutes before the Shabbos, Created ten things. Asara Devarim Nivru Ben Erev Shabbos Ben Ashmashos. Ten things were created on the eve of Shabbos, and they include a number of items: the Pihaaretz, the mouth that opens up in the earth in time of Korach in our parsha, includes the Pia Be'er, includes the well of Miriam, it includes the Piaton, includes the mouth of the donkey that speaks to Bilam, the Keshet, the rainbow, the man, the Mateh, the staff of Aaron. And the list goes on as well, including the Luchos, the holy tablets that Moshe brought down from Har Sinai, containing the words of the Torah, the words of God. Erev Shabbos, a few minutes before the day of rest, God has completed this masterful creation that no human mind can comprehend. And God says, whoops, I forgot a few items. I forgot about these ten things. The Maharal wants to know, why are these things special? And why does God seem to forget a, a, a last list of items as if he were channeling that human frailty of forgetting to tape the refrigerator, forgetting to turn on the lights and shut off the lights for Shabbos? Why does God save a few items for the last minute? Maharal explains in Derechayim, in his commentary to Perke Avos, that Ben Hashmashos, the twilight zone, that period that is neither day nor night, not Chol or Kodesh, it is not mundane, it is not holy, it is neither, and it is both. Everything created in that magical window of time, that liminal space between Kedusha and Chulin, between holiness and that which is not holy, that which is sacred and profane, has the ability to be transformed and elevated or seen as simply matter and earth. Those stones can either be tablets that Moshe carves on the Luchos Abris, or those stones could be two rocks. The earth could be a ground with a sinkhole, or it can execute the will of God in a time that is miraculous and wondrous for all in the desert to see, to swallow up Korach and 250 of his cohorts. The man can be a loaf of bread, or it could be a bread from heaven. And the staff of Aharon, can either be a wooden stick or it could blossom and flower and bring about almonds and rationalize and teach the Jewish people that Aaron and the Shevet of Levi were selected by God for a reason. There's a great book, a children's book that we love to read in our house. It's called Not a Stick by Antoinette Portis. In Not a Stick, you read each page and you see the main character, a little pig. And the pig is holding a stick in different formations, in different 
different imaginary poses. And the narrator talks down to the young pig and says, are you still holding that stick? And the pig says, that's not a stick. It's a baton to lead a, a marching band. The next page, you're still holding that stick. It's a dumbbell, and you show a, mu a, a muscular figure holding a dumbbell in the air, hoisting in the air with great might. Is that a stick? That's not a stick. It's a sword that's being wielded by a fierce and brave uh, knight to ward off a frightening dragon. And each page shows the stick being imagined in wondrous and magical formations. And while you start the book and you think, well, those silly children, all they see is a stick or a rock or a box, inanimate object, by the end of the book, parents learn a profound lesson. It is children who are able to elevate a stick to something that is sublime, something that is surreal, something that is beyond the physical. Everything in Bein Hashemashos teaches us that we can use our physical gifts, our prowess, our intelligence, our money for mundane purposes, for physical purposes, or spiritual purposes. It says the Maharal, that's why it was created close to Shabbos. Because if you were blessed with money, you can either lord it over other people, or you can change the world around you. If you were blessed with intelligence, you can either use it to be sarcastic, and to be critical, and to be overbearing, or you can use it to inspire, to teach, to articulate a message of profound depth, of godliness, of Torah to the world in a way that will be digested, in a way that will inspire others. Every gift that we have been given can exist in that realm of the twilight zone. It either can be used as an inanimate object, as something that is chulin, or something that is kedusha. And so when we read the final moments of the Parsha, and the staff of Aaron begins to flower and blossom, it is the ultimate rejection of Korach, and all of the villains of Chumash Bamidbar, who were given profound talents, intelligence, wealth, and gifts, and they squandered it. Whether it's the Miraglim, whether it's Korach, whether it's Bilam and his donkey, each of these figures were majestic personalities. They were blessed individuals, and each of them disappointed. Each of them saw nothing more on the page than a stick. And we read the Parsha, we are asked to turn the page, to look beyond the physical and to see the spiritual and sublime capacity in the many gifts with which HaKadosh Baruch Hu has bestowed us. Good Shabbos.